Hello and welcome to part two of the Beginner's Guide to the Airbrush, where Byron from Artisopa sat down with me and took me through how to use, set up and maintain an airbrush for the first time. And this time round, we're going to take a look at angle of attack and dilution. So follow through the exercises. I hope you find it useful and I'll see you after this. Next stage, we're going to look at how you can just completely remove the need for control pretty much entirely by using angles. And this is sheer magic. Okay. So if you grab your piece of paper or a new one, doesn't matter hugely. What I'd like you to do is fold like a, a stiff uh, 40 to like just one inch before its left end or, or whatever. Fold it in like a, a stiff 45 degree angle. Okay. It can be a corner of it. it. It doesn't have to be neat or anything. That, that's not what matters. We just need to get an angle out of it. Okay, fold it back. Okay, so it's okay. that sort of... Right, th this is, this is going to feel a bit weird at first. What I'd like you to do is airbrush and try, try and land in the crease. Um, but what I want you to see is how much more paint will stick to the back wall that we've just created than the, the flat bit before it. Does that make sense? Okay, I see. So... So you want to be coming at so it kind of from like... the opposite corner to the one that you folded. Turn, turn it all the way over. Oh, I grab see. The other, grab the other side of it. Okay. Okay, yeah. And then c come at it that way. And I just want you, like, this This is just to give you a visual impression of how much more it will stick to the back wall than it will. So pick a, like, a fairly obscure, like, lower angle. Okay. So if I go for... And then, yeah, and then tilt it the other way. And what you should find is that it lands on both of the surfaces in a different manner. So right in the crease. Yep. And then pull pull back a bit. And then now pretty much go along your paper, like put your airbrush almost at the same angle as the paper, and it'll barely hit the paper Ooh, okay. um, that isn't the fold. I'm just struggling a little bit because I've got the moisture trap on the bottom, <laughs> which your, is like your hitting the thing slightly. Yeah, it'd be easier with a smaller bit. We'll do something else in a second, okay. which will... Which will do like take the learning point of this and put it into something really useful for tanks. The paranoia <laughs> of pulling the trigger back is so real. Okay, it's, it's just chill out, man. Okay. It's all fine. And then do the pulley back thing a little bit. See how that feels. Ooh, it should behave differently on I the different might surfaces. Be nearly out of note. There we go. All right, I, can, I think I've got the I've got the general <laughs> I've got the general kind of angle of it now. I just need to get a bash. And obviously, most miniatures are much smaller than they pull a bit of paper, so the type of issues you're having there won't be a thing. Hey, your control's getting better. I can see from your line. Okay, that makes. Weirdly, just having the crease to aim for makes a huge difference as to right. working out where to uh, where to pull back on the trigger. That's it's a straight line. Also, given the angle you picked, you're pretty much it, you were aiming for a bit where it's going to land nicely on the yeah. paper. Um, now, the next thing I want you to do is pop your airbrush down for a second uh, and create a a, a, a ripple fold um, somewhere in your paper. So like fold it once, fold it again. So you've got a little triangle bit sticking up essentially. Okay, and then just pull it back and flat it out now. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna airbrush a perfectly straight line <laughs> with the help of our piece of paper. Are we, are we um, though? <laughs> yeah, we are. We absolutely are. Okay, so um, you're probably gonna have to fold, hold the fold so it doesn't blow around. Yeah. Um, now, what I want you to do, John, is is what I was talking about before. Just kind of aim off off model, yeah, and just lightly go for the the edge of the paper. And what we should end up here is like a, a potentially a nice fade towards a hard edge. So start off, off paper. Yeah, off. Yeah, only by a little bit, and then just br bring it into contact once you think you know what's going on, and just follow the line across. How did it go? I was doing all right, and then I just lost it right at the end. But that's all good. So if like if, if people can imagine, I've got conveniently the model I've got in my hand demonstrates that a little bit. So you see, not sure how well it'll be showing it, but this edge here, I've done exactly that. Yeah. So I've aimed off it. I probably just put a piece of paper behind to mask it, which means that I can't you know I can't screw that up to any degree. 
got my airbrush and I've just aimed off it and I've, I've lightened that edge. Yeah. So we've done not you know not a perfect fade, but a pretty swanky fade on the edge of an object, and that is something that is incredibly useful. So let's say it's a lot of change and you want to have the wings be you know purple at the tips and after you've painted it green it's not all about airbrushing at the beginning the middle or the end it doesn't matter you just use it wherever it makes sense this is where you can introduce a fade you can introduce a fade to horns like this and if you're going off model and you're going back towards model it's pretty difficult to make a you know a, a significant cock up because you can just nudge it nudge it nudge it okay i didn't cock that up i am satisfied with that put it to one side yep. and, and you know this is the type of thing you can build up and it is incredibly useful the other version of this, uh, I'll go and grab my keeper in a second, but is if you have something with lumpy, bumpy texture like uh, bloodthirst wings or something, this is the same idea as choosing angling to make it look like it's lit from above or below. Yeah. So if my, my Marathi rings have wing wrinkles in them, ring wings have wrinkles, <laughs> tongue twister, I use the dark color from below and I use the light color from above and then I dry brushed on top of it. But that dark color from below just caught the underside of all the ripples and it, it made it look, you know, dramatically lit. Yeah. And I, I didn't particularly do anything clever there. I used a forgiving technique and whatever you want to call it, physics. Um, so th thinking about this type of thing and letting the model do the work for you is where I'd recommend people start. And then exercises like the closer, further away, um, it, you cannot do that enough and you can start doing it on model the moment you feel comfortable with it. The most important thing is to have fun, feel like you're playing and... That's it, really. Yeah. You know, nothing is more important than that to uh, to figuring it out. Yeah. Right. Let's have a little look at your airbrush now. Does the tip look like it has paint on it? Okay. Tip the tip of the needle itself. Tip of the needle. Has it got black on it? It's a little difficult to tell just because the colour of the paint is actually not that dissimilar from the colour of <laughs> the needle in not shadow. One. <laughs> so, so what I'd like, like you this, to do. There's like. There's like a, a glistening Let's, there that I can just about make okay. out. Let's do an experiment. So if you remove your crown cap, it's best to remove it in the way that would tighten your nozzle. So that's going to be turning your hands away from you clockwise. Um, just because then you don't accidentally, if you go towards you, you might accidentally loosen your nozzle cap, which isn't what we're after. I think that's so, actually what I just did. <laughs> okay, Somehow. there you okay. go. Come on. Let's give it a little wiggle. It's um, it's made to pinch pretty tightly on it, so it practice funny. makes perfect. Now, what I'd like you to do is in the same motion, again, John, don't go the way that you did, go away from you. Um, pinch, it's fine to touch your needle like this, we're not plowing our fingers in, we're not going to hurt ourselves, we're not going to hurt the airbrush. So pinch it and twist, and then just pull away, and you might see some black on your fingertips. Yeah, just the teeniest amount. Cool. So we had a, that is tip drying explained, basically. When... Uh, when paint leaves your airbrush, it leaves over the needle. It shouldn't be sticking to it too readily. Some brands stick more than others. You can put some mediums in that make it less likely to stick. You can even put a tiny bit of lubrication on it. Um, people have got different, you know, some people dip their tips in stuff as they're going. There's different ways to approach this, but um, that is how you clean a tip, basically. Let's check it. It's possible to, like, you don't actually need a cap on the end, do you? You can use it no. without if you really wanted to. I don't know that there's, yeah. is there any particular scenario where you'd, that would make make things easier, or you you can get stuff closer, and you can clean. The main one would be for being able to clean tip drying more easily. Although yeah. the way that this crown cap is designed, you can do what I taught you to do in a slightly more fiddly fashion, leaving it on. Um, it, it's just a little bit more difficult to get purchase towards the base of the needle. That was um, weirdly really easy to control. Just I just vaguely decided to see what it was like without, in case it made just... a difference, but. Yeah. You probably just chilled out, dude. <laughs> um like it's um just having fun is is quite a good way to make mistakes happen. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna put the thing back on because I don't trust myself. Yeah, it's you know, it obviously objectively if you don't have something in the way, it is technically better, but also it's really annoying when you drop your airbrush on its face and have to buy a twenty pound needle. Yeah. So I, um... <laughs> I, <laughs> I know a lot of this is showing almost like kind of how Good things to do when you start out, and also potentially how not to do stuff. But I oh man, just want to tell me don't use the little spanner. I wouldn't have returned my airbrush on the day that I bought it because I broke it. Ah, so um, <laughs> <laughs> speaking very much from personal uh, yeah. experience here, the angle is really important. Let's play with dilution. So, however much paint you've got left in your airbrush, just pop like 
two or two drops thinner in. I imagine you've not got too much mm, left. Yeah, <laughs> very very little. It actually looks pretty. It actually looks pretty dry in there. I'd say. Okay, you might be. I'll tell you what. Let's let's exit it fully then on your paper and just so just just blast it out. Shrapnel it out. Yeah. Go for it. See, you, you might be surprised how much is in there, so you don't have to pull it back all the way, but just play around with it as it's going. You know, any opportunity to experiment, especially as a beginner, is always a good one. And I often find we've mentioned it various times already, but if you don't care about it as much as like, oh, I'll just you know, I'll, I'll empty my brush, um, that's quite a good situation to uh, not worry about things and just perhaps learn something. There we go. All gone. Yep. All. Oh, just occasional. Like the occasional yeah. uh, dot. Little. Actually, doing it, okay, it's so really easy to do very tiny, very precise dots when you've got no paint in there. Yeah. <laughs> so we're, we're using... People vary their pressure a lot. We'll talk, like, we'll talk about pressure in a second. But first, we're going to play with dilution. So what ratio do we, do we use? Two thinner, five... Oh, it probably ended up more like seven, didn't it? You did a couple of extras. It was, was it two thin yeah. to seven paint, roughly. I think it was. It was. Yeah, it was probably. Between, I was going to say. It and felt like it felt eight. like five spots of paint, but it could easily have been more than that, just because of the last little dribble that you get that is going to be yeah. something to get used let's, to. Let's aim for um, uh, completely in the other direction, so like two thirds thinner now. So pop them. Um, Pop in like six drops of thinner and two drops of paint. Okay. So six thinner, two. Oh, excuse me. You get out of the way. Mm -hmm. Are you getting twitchy? Do you want to put paint on the model yet? I. Uh, <laughs> yes and no. So, I know that. Yeah. Uh, three. Oh, that was more. That's fine. You can put a little, a little bit more of the other one in, or not. That's all good. That's and a then... fair amount, probably more than we initially went for, but it's fine. That's fine. This is so we're gonna. The aim here, guys, is to make something that it is easier to put down in a not one hundred percent opaque fashion. Actually, the the light itself is way easier. So that's like that's probably closer to six thinner and two paint. Okay, perfect. That's grand. So give it a um, do the back flush now, um, and then give it a mix. The the order doesn't matter. Okay. So pinch the end thing fully, down. and then just pull back gently, and you'll hear the like la, 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 la. noise. Yeah, there we go. Oh, wonderful. Give it a little bit of a mix with your sad brush. <laughs> there we go. Right. Poor thing. There's nothing really wrong with it even. <laughs> I'm now. just. I'm just not. <laughs> I don't know where I'm using like actual nice brushes. No, you shouldn't do. And make sure you do get to the bottom as well. You don't need to be, or you don't want to be aggressive or anything. Obviously, you're touching metal on metal, but they're both they're both pretty tough things. You just want to make sure there's no big blobs in there. It could give you a surprise if there's a change in consistency. Yeah. Okay. That looks okay then. Pretty... Right. Just give, give it. Just give it a whirl. Give it a bash. Okay. Um, I'm going to grab another piece of paper. Not delicately or anything. Because this one's all bendy, <laughs> and I keep knocking it around. So, right. So this might feel, at least for like fades and transitions, this should feel a lot more forgiving. But we'll see. I don't know how potent that paint is. That feels way easier to control. Doing like okay. a little more forgiving, yeah, right? Yeah, doing like a little dot, and then Wonderful. pulling out. It feels like there's less soaking in. Grand. Give me a John. Okay. Oh. Okay, let me try that again. <laughs> I got over enthusiastic. Oh, Went all the way back almost. Absolutely fine. Okay. So there is it'll be more forgiving until the point it's not. Really unhelpful thing to say, but um that is the case. <laughs> so the wetter it is, the more forgiving you'll Worse be. Worse writing. Into... But easier to control, <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah. Exactly, and if you do like a like if you just do spirals on the edge of your page or something, you should find that the flow there is wonderful. Yeah. And it's just something I'm finding very quickly is that after every th every little bit, it's totally worth aiming it somewhere else and just doing a quick burst. Yeah, because occasionally I'm just getting like little splashes from, I guess yeah. what hasn't gone all the way through last time, and it's just kind of sitting on the end so, of the needle. Uh, yes. Yeah, so this is the type of thing that it gets it gets easier just to control out of force a habit. 
um, or getting, you know, we've, we've diluted more than that paint may need and that's probably going to be giving us some issues. How's that feeling? Is it feeling nice? That feels way easier to control. Brilliant. So as with everything, you know, there's different uses for different uh, types of paint and different dilutions of paint. Yeah. Um, this is going to feel better in some ways and worse in others. Uh, try dotting your own dots now. Give that a bash. So put down some baby dots and then try and then try dotting them. Okay. Oh. Doing baby dots way easier as well. Like way okay, easier. Cool. The aim was slightly off, but just the ability to do it was slightly easier. Ugh. Nice. Wonderful. So. Got you. So, for the first time at this point, um, is your is your compressor on about 30 or is it 25-ish currently on... as far as the pressure? It's on really... 25 currently. Pop it to... Pop it all the way to 15 and let's see what difference that makes. All right. And, and then just... This is this is in your hands now. So it, how just tell me how different it feels. Have a little bit of a play. Do things like you've done before or whatever, and just just let me know if any aspects of it feels. It might be easier to do smaller things or thin lines. Hopefully, we will see. Oh, that feels way different. It's harder to get it's a consistent. It feels like there's there's more spray almost. It's hard yeah, yeah. to get a consistent um, like a like a consistent solid line because I wasn't yeah. moving if, if very you're fast. It out, yeah, if you're forcing it out loads, it it, it is easier to get cons uh, more consistent stuff. You can pop it up a little bit. Pop it up to like eighteen, twenty, something like that. Give it give it a little bit of a fiddle. We'll we'll see if we can find a sweet spot for this. You know, this is where it gets complex. Um, for the dilution you've got currently, the ideal pressure for whatever you're trying to do, which would vary on the task you're trying to do, will be different than it would be with another paint or with the same paint diluted differently. Just nudge it up a little bit and we'll try and find a middle ground, okay. which will probably end up being like 20, maybe 22 or something, potentially. That towards the end of there was starting to get a bit easier to, to kind of like, uh, to kind of work out what was happening. Yep. Okay. Got a little gap down here. That's actually a little bit easier as well. Cool. We might have found our nice middle ground there. Just for a minute there, I had like the proper position to just do the same kind of size dot each time. <laughs> just for a second. Consistent. I'll get there. It's like Oh, you've got you've got musical instruments behind you. You pick them up on day one and some things go better than you'd thought and some things go worse than you'd thought and it's just uh, how it is. Actually, that's... Try working super duper close on baby, baby pressures and see how that feels. Okay. So that's on... Keep it, still keep it quite fast. Don't go, like, um... Don't go... Don't go really slow or anything, but just... You should be able to draw some tiny, tiny lines now, basically, is what I'm hoping for. And go go quick. Chill out, just go... Bleh. How tiny is that line? That that's pretty consistently thin, actually. <laughs> I don't know if you can see, oh, see the like minuscule little tiny right? squiggly one. Yeah. Okay, so at this point, I may as well get on my horse. This is why you do not need to start out with a tiny needle. Uh, what what uh, width would you say that is, John? Oh God, uh... like a mil, <sighs> something like that. I do have the. That's all good. We, we know we did a tiny line, yeah. right? That that line is probably, you know, less wide than most Warhammer figures' eyeballs. It is it is minuscule, particularly for starting out. I would really, really, really heavily recommend people do not touch a nozzle size smaller than 0.35 mils. This is a 0.4. Up to 0.6 is absolutely fine. 0.5 is great too. Um you will have less difficulties diluting your paint and getting it perfect. You'll be able to put any paints you want through the airbrush, almost, 
you know, not like GW texture paints, but you can put GW paints through that airbrush fine. It doesn't need to be airbrush The idea paints. of someone putting one of the GW texture paints through an airbrush is just giving me some sort of like heart Horrible. palpitation. <laughs> just straight oh, away, man. it's like... It's cool. oh. If you think that's bad, you should see what varnish can do to the inside of an airbrush. Um, which maybe we'll get to, we'll get to I, fix I thought I'd, I future. thought I'd... Can, so can you not varnish through an airbrush? You can absolutely do it. You just... Don't be a naughty boy and leave it overnight. Afterwards. Oh, okay. <laughs> You've got to be really <laughs> careful some, about. Oh, you end up with some it. really resilient jelly, like really resilient jelly. Nice. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's grim. It takes a lot of effort to clear yeah. out. Okay. So, do you think? Do you do you feel ready to do something to a model? Yeah. 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 Why not? Yeah. Why, Why not? not? I hope you found that as useful as I did at the time. Look out for part three. It is on its way and will be here shortly. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.